There are some people on YouTube who are extremely stupid. They watch a couple of videos about science and they think they fucking know everything. What they haven't done is they haven't actually, you know, gone to college or university and haven't actually gotten a, you know, master's of science in physics or a master's of science in geology. But strangely enough, the people who have no degrees whatsoever in earth science or geology are the ones that feel it necessary to comment about global warming and such things as fusion power. This video I wanted to talk about, you can call it my own personal theory, a big truck series review theory, about why fusion power will never be a reality on Earth. My theory is that the reason why we can't create fusion is simply because E equals MC squared, which Einstein told us. The problem is energy has a mass and a speed component connected to it. I'm going to simplify this. I'm not going to use big pedantic words for you dumbasses who would love to attack me. Because I know the first thing you're thinking is, oh, well, we've got fusion bombs, man. We got fusion bombs. We can create... No, asshole. I'm talking about controlled fusion to create a fusion reactor like you see in the sci-fi movies and your favorite video games such as Halo and Call of Duty since you play that all day and you're pretty fucking dumb for it. But anyway, um, fusion power requires more input energy than you actually get out of it. Now, yes, you can point to the sun and you can talk about the fact that the sun is a f massive fusion reactor hundreds of times larger than the earth. And that is true. The sun has something the earth doesn't have. The sun has a tremendous amount of mass and E equals MC squared. When all of that mass of all of those gases comes together, what it does is it creates gravity. And all of that gravity crushes atoms together and creates bigger atoms. Now, what I wanted to do is I'm gonna show you this video. Um, well, I'm gonna show you a video and I'm also gonna show you a website that you should subscribe to, especially if you're one of these fucking dumbass high school dropouts who are on YouTube believing all this fucking global warming shit and, and fusion power and this, that, and other and perpetuating these myths. But what I want you to do is, you know, besides actually going back to school and, you know, completing a uh, degree in physics or geology before you comment on any of this, what I want you to do is I want you to check out this website. You might have to subscribe to it. And I want you to look at the simplified, dumbed down videos that they have for little kids so that they can explain mass, you know, different difficult concepts to little children. So this one's about the sun and star formation and star life. Watch this. So this is Tim and Moby. Dear Tim and Moby, how do stars burn out from Corey? This is one of my favorite topics. Yeah, isn't it? Stars change throughout their lives, just like we do, only they live for billions of years instead of a few decades. Mm -hmm. They start out as clouds of gas and dust called stellar, stellar nurseries. nurseries. A vocabulary word for you dumbasses. The force of gravity slowly pulls particles inside these clouds. Okay, the force of gravity pulls these particles together. And when they come together, eventually, so many of them come together that they create a large amount of gravity in a centralized space which science would call a singularity some of you would think of singularity as just a black hole but black holes have to do with star formation however black holes are much more massive stars that collapse into themselves and the gravity becomes so great until nothing can escape except uh no nothing can escape even light however they do emit uh some types of radiation but well, hold on i'm getting off topic hold on, hold on. closer together uh, yeah. causing dense clumps to form dense clumps if a clump grows large enough, the pressure caused by gravity inside one of these baby protostars begins to generate heat. Yes, like the sun. As heat and pressure build until nuclear fusion reactions nuclear fusion. take place in the core. Okay. Gravity pulls hydrogen atoms. This is the thing that I want you to see. Gravity pulls hydrogen atoms together, crushing them into larger atoms such as helium. Any of you dumbasses who happen to have probably flunked out of chemistry should know that atoms change their names when they increase the number or decrease the number of protons. The number of electrons, the number of neutrons doesn't matter. It's the number of protons. When you crush these atoms together, it creates new atoms, bigger atoms, and it generates a large amount of heat. Uh, you know, I hate to be so negative, but I'm so tired of arguing with people. Together, I really smashing am. smashing and fusing them into heavy helium. helium and that releases energy called nuclear fusion. 
Nuclear fusion generates an enormous amount of energy, causing the star to ignite. Boom! And now you have a sun. This is the beginning of the longest part of the star's lifetime, or its main sequence. And our sun is a main sequence star. That's where our star, the sun, is right now. Mm -hmm. It's about 4.6 billion years old, which means it's a little less than halfway through its 10 billion year long main sequence. Mm -hmm. Right. I studied well, all of this when I was in astronomy. After its main sequence depends oh, on its God. mass. Astronomers actually don't know what happens to low mass okay, stars. Okay, so we have a lot that we have to learn mass about low mass stars. stars. Maybe a couple they more satellites. Have a main I don't know. Send some stuff out there and see what happens. Years. That's longer than the current age of the universe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mid sized stars, like our Sun, become white dwarfs. And this takes billions of years, so Those don't worry, it's not going to happen anytime about soon. As massive as the sun, You're not going to live to see it. The is big. They're around the size of the Earth, actually. Mm hmm. A couple of things will happen before the sun turns into a white dwarf, though. Mm -hmm. The sun will begin to die when it uses up all the hydrogen in its core. Mm -hmm. At that point, the sun will expand, ballooning to many times its current size. Stars in this stage of their life are called red giants because their surfaces cool down to a red glow. Mm -hmm. Plus, they're really, really big. The sun will start burning helium at that stage, using it into even heavier elements. Yeah. Eventually, it may get so big that it engulfs the Earth. So all you stupid liberals who are so worried about, you know, people driving around in SRT vehicles, AMG vehicles, BMW M's, because they're using too much gas, and you, you're also financing terrorism. What you need to do is take a good look at this fucking picture right here, because that's what's ultimately going to happen. It has nothing to do with... Somebody driving around in a, a 6.4 liter V8 Jeep. It has nothing to do with that. What it has to do with is that eventually the sun, it, theoretically, the, the sun is going to grow into a red giant and torch the earth. But uh, you don't have to worry about that because you're not going to be here. And by the way, when there's only less than 320 million Americans, but there's over 1 billion people in Africa, India, and China, has anybody done the math about global warming? There's less than 300 million of us. There's 1 million people in Africa, the continent. There's 1 million people in China, over 1 million. I should say 1.4, between 1.4, 1.6. And the same number or around the same number in India. And that's not even counting the rest of Asia. And you motherfuckers, you stupid fucking liberals are worried about 300 million Americans. Even if all of us were driving around in Hemis, First of all, and that's enough, that's for another video. First of all, we wouldn't even be able to use up all the fossil fuels on Earth because there's only 300 million of us and this fossil fuels has been accumulating for millions upon millions of years. What we're really doing is we're taxing people for energy use. That's what we're doing. We're taxing people for energy use. Gas guzzler taxes on cars. Federal gas taxes on gas. Other taxes that they've thrown in to take money from you stupid fucking liberals who think that by making more bike paths that you're going to save the fucking planet. What you're really doing is by making more bike paths, you're slowing down trucks and traffic and you're making them use more fuel because they're stuck in traffic instead of allowing us to have wider roads. You dumb motherfucker. You know what? Wait, no. I'm going to do that for another video. Goddamn fucking liberals. So anyway, no, don't wait, worry. We'll all be long gone before that happens. Yeah, we'll Which be long gone before, before that happens. Anyway, after no more than about a billion years as a huge red giant, mm -hmm. the sun will begin to collapse under the pressure under of gravity. Under the pressure of its gravity. It'll actually get kind of unstable, expanding and contracting and shedding its outer layers in the process. Mm -hmm. The remains of those outer layers form a big cloud of gas and dust called a planetary nebula. Mm -hmm. <sighs> nope, they don't have anything to do with planets. They're just called that. Mm -hmm. But you know, you've probably seen some awesome pictures of planetary nebulas from the Hubble Space Telescope. Oh, God. These are pictures of stars that are at the end stages of their lives. Yeah. Oh, and like by the way, by the way, sun, you could way make the argument does. that all of this is just theoretical. The only thing about it is, yeah, you could make the argument that it's theoretical, but keep in mind, we have telescopes, we've got satellites taking pictures of stars, and we've been watching the light from stars arrive to the Earth thousands of years, millions of years after it left those stars. And 
the reason why it's a slightly bit more than as being as simple as just a theory is simply because we're actually accumulating evidence over time. If something happens millions of light years away, it takes millions of years for the light to get here. However, when it finally does get here, if you're able to see it, you can watch those things occur in real time or our time, anyway, whatever. At the center of a planetary nebula is a core, core of carbon. carbon which, after cooling, finally becomes a white dwarf. I'm like the angry version of Neil deGrasse Tyson. Well, I'm extremely angry at liberals. It's not the only way a star can die. Who are taxing me and my Stars Hemi Jeep and my Hemi SR T300. I'm sick and tired of you people. Gas should be $2 a gallon like it was when Obama got in the office. And then all of a sudden it's back up to $4? A month or longer. And during that time, How am I supposed to do burnouts? Galaxy with a billion stars. I gotta pay money for the tires and everything. Come on. The clouds of gas and dust Whatever. that supernovas spew out are Jesus. where heavy elements are Trying made. to make things yeah, harder for a brother. The formation of new stars. The core that's left over can go one of two ways, depending on the mass of the original star. Mm hmm If the star is about ten times <sighs> as massive as our sun, the protons and electrons in the core are crushed into neutrons. Yes, and this way you get a neutron star. Now I want all of you dummies who are in physics and chemistry class not paying attention to realize that it's possible to crush electrons and protons because you gotta remember, an electron is a negative charge, a proton's a positive charge. If you crush those things together, if you have plus one and minus one, what do you get? You get zero! And when you get zero, you get a neutron. And those neutrons form neutron stars through what's called electron Electron degeneration. You should look that up. I'm like the angry version of Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> I should get a PhD just so I could talk shit rapidly, on YouTube. Emitting pulses of I'm not spending waves. all that money in school just These to get a damn pulsars. PhD. I could do it for free right now. Pulsars, yes. Yeah, if, love on the other hand, the original star was more than ten times as massive as the sun, its supernova core will It'll collapse in on itself, itself and create a black hole. It will keep collapsing until it forms a tiny area of infinite... Okay, so for all you people who think that our sun is going to turn into a black hole based on what you saw in some sci-fi movie, what I need you to understand is our sun doesn't have the mass to become a black hole. Mass. E equals MC squared, guys. If you take a larger amount of mass and crush it together, like a super giant star and crush it, then you can make a black hole. But because all a black hole is, is a massive amount of gravity that makes it so that no light can escape from it. I personally believe that what it is is a tear in space-time itself, which makes it so that anything that enters it never escapes. Now, some people would like to think, oh yeah, well, it's, it's, ga it's a gateway to, to hell or some shit like that because you watch the stupid... Doom 3. But no, 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 no. No. A black hole is basically a time eraser. It's where space-time collapses in on itself to the point where time itself has been chopped and skewed. Kind of like android phones. Density, called a singularity. So, singularity, right. Mm -hmm. We call this a black hole. A black hole? gravity is so powerful that nothing within range can escape That's it. That's goddamn right, baby. Event horizon, motherfucker. Nope, not even light. Nope. Not even liberalism. And nothing you throw into a black hole will ever come back. Yeah, not even liberals. We have a whole other movie on Not even those. liberals trying to tax out. me for my energy use. Well, time to take the trash out. Yeah, take get rid of the liberals, out of the out of White you know, House we, we and out of take Congress. The trash out to the corner. That's right. Get rid of that trash, baby. <laughs> okay, so you know you should subscribe to Brain Pop and learn something. In fact, they've got quizzes you can take. Um, you know, you you could even get this for your kids. You just subscribe to it. You, you, this will help your kid a lot in science. Now, I didn't learn what I learned from this because you know I don't want any of you saying, "Oh, well, if it taught him everything he knows, I don't want that." My I don't want to give that to my kid because it'll turn my kid insane into a psychotic black uh, Republican or something. But in any event, what I'm saying is you could learn a lot from some of these websites that simplify this stuff for the average dumbass who doesn't know how to read and has ADHD. Um, which term best describes a stellar nursery? Hmm, gee, I, I was learning that five minutes ago. <sighs> a cloud of gas and dust? Yeah, baby. In the movie, Tim refers to baby stars as protostars. What can you infer about the prefix proto? It means first? <gasps> yeah. Place the following stages in the life of a low-mass star like the sun in order. Uh, white main sequence, red giant, white dwarf. That's C, A, B. Okay. 
Which of the following describes the process of nuclear fusion as it occurs inside our sun? Hydrogen, no. Helium, no. Hydrogen atom combined to make helium. Yep, there we go. What effect does gravity have on stars? Hmm. It's a tough one. It causes stars to swell. No, it forms stars from gas and dust. Yep. Fusion, baby. What is a supernova? Hmm, 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 hmm. It's when the star explodes. Yeah. You see, your, your kid can learn a lot from this. This is a very good website. How does a white dwarf compare to our sun as it exists now? Um, has less mass and is less dense. It has more mass and is, has a larger mass. No, it's small. It has a similar mass, but as much. It has less mass and is less dense. What is a what will a, what will a star that's a thousand times as massive as the sun ultimately become? Hmm, black hole. Okay, which of the following depicts planetary nebula? Hmm, this is a tough one. I think that's it. No, 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 what the fuck? That's a stellar nursery, my fault. I'm not thinking. Gotta stop drinking. How is a neutron star different from a regular star? Hmm, um, let's see. It has less mass and greater gravity? No, we don't. No, it burns brighter than it got. No, it has almost infinite density. Yeah. Okay, let's see. View your results. Okay. Eight out of ten, motherfucker. Review your answers. Which ones did I get wrong? See, this is how your kid can learn from a website like this. And they can go and they can look back over their answers. And anything they get wrong, they can figure out why they got it wrong. This is similar to how textbooks are designed. Because you got to remember, most science really comes down to research, vocabulary, and then there's measurements in the lab and testing of, you know, making experiments or whatever. But I thoroughly recommend this site, especially to people who think they know everything because they've seen a couple of videos on YouTube. Remember, the name of the site is brainpop.com. And once again, this has been an iPhone 6 Plus video, 1080p, 60 frames per second. Far better than all of the Android phones that you could possibly find on the market, especially the Galaxy S4 or 5 and the Galaxy Note or whatever they want to call it. And the last thing I'll say is that the Bugatti Veyron Super Sport is the fastest, most powerful, street-legal production car in the world. Don't believe anybody who says it's the Hennessy Venom GT, which is actually a Lotus that has been rebadged into Hennessy Venom GT and has a Chevy engine that's just waiting to like fall apart when they do a good run. And it never actually completed the top speed run for the world record in both directions. So um, anybody who tells you different, tell them to go defenestrate themselves.